Your Academic Skills Center presents this video series to help you strengthen your statistics skills. Hello, STAT students, and welcome to the ANOVA presentation. My name is Janine Allwright, and I am the Instructional Specialist at Walden's Academic Skills Center, where I lead the statistics tutoring team. In this ANOVA video presentation, I will remind you again that we are now working with research questions about the greater population. A t-test and an ANOVA are related. They are both compare means tests. I will share with you where the t-test ends and the ANOVA begins, and the comparison might clarify the difference between both. Of course, I'll discuss the research question and the hypotheses that are appropriate for an ANOVA test. And I will show you how to set up the ANOVA and talk about the assumptions that are specific to this test. We will then move to SPSS to show an example, and we will interpret the results by describing the variables, interpreting the Levines, and selecting the appropriate post hoc test, and then evaluate the null hypothesis at model level for significance and interpret the results and the effect size. For this test, the effect size is called eta square. We will then complete the conversation by telling the story of the data, including the social change interpretation. Now let's get started. And here is our sample to population figure again. Well, you can see that we are now really engaged in inferential statistics. That's where the ANOVA lives in the same place where the t-test lived last week. I already mentioned that the t-test and the ANOVA are related. They are both compare means tests. And I'm going to compare them here to show you where they are the same and where they differ. Now I'm going to compare the ANOVA to one specific t-test, the independent samples t-test that we addressed in the previous video, where we compared two groups that were both part of one categorical independent variable. The dependent variable was continuous, and an important part of the independent samples t-test was the interpretation of the homogeneity of variances, also known as Levine's test. If you find differences between those two groups in an independent samples t-test, then you're kind of done. You don't have to run another test. All the output that you need is ready to be interpreted. So the between group comparison tells the full story of the data. The ANOVA test also uses one categorical independent variable, but now I need a variable that has at least three or more groups. The dependent variable is continuous, and I will have to engage with the results of the Levine's test to evaluate homogeneity of variances between those three or more levels of that categorical variable. Now, when I find significance in the results of the ANOVA test, I'm not quite sure which group comparisons are driving that significance. Imagine that I have an independent variable with just three groups. Any significant results could be generated by the differences between group one and group two, group one and group three, or group two and group three, or all of the above. So the between group comparison tells me only part of the story. And that is the main difference between the t-test and the ANOVA test. When I have the between group comparison between two groups in the t-test, I'm done. I know where the differences are. In an ANOVA test, I need to look a little deeper. I need the post hoc test to assess the exact within group comparisons that complete my story of the data. The Levine's test is connected to the post hoc test in a sense that the outcome of the Levine's test, whether you evaluate that as homogeneity of variances fulfilled or not, is going to drive 
which post hoc test you report. When we set up the test, we ask for two post hoc tests just in case. We will only report the one that squares with how Levine's came out. The research question and hypotheses in an ANOVA test are rather similar to the setup for the t-test, but not quite. I have a simulated research question on the screen here, and it shows that I'm hoping to find differences between four regions in the United States for alcohol consumption. I am comparing these four regions, North, East, South, West, for how much alcohol they consume. Be mindful, though, that you articulate your research question in such a way that you avoid comparing your IV to your DV. I cannot compare four regions to alcohol consumption. I'm comparing the four regions to each other. Of course, I like to start with the alternative hypothesis as that shows what I'm expecting to find. And for the ANOVA test, I will have to generate at least one group comparison that is significant in order to get significant results. That could be more than one group comparison, but there has to be at least one that drives a significant result. And that's what is articulated here in the alternative hypothesis. Of course, the null hypothesis turns that around. I will not find significant differences between four regions in the United States for alcohol consumption. Let's look at the details of setting up the ANOVA test. You know by now that we need to work with an IV that is categorical and that has at least three levels. The DV is the same as in any compare means test. It's meant to be continuous or also called scale in SPSS. We need a research question that we will translate in alternative and null hypothesis and we will select two different post hoc tests depending the outcome of the Levine's test. Like any test, an ANOVA has assumptions that we will briefly review. The test variable, which is the dependent variable, is supposed to be normally distributed in each population group of the grouping variable. If you really want to test that, you could run a histogram on each separate level of that independent variable, and you would have to have normally distributed histograms. Of course, we have to assess the outcome of the Levine's test, and we're going to trust that the researcher sampled this that I said in a random way and that the scores are independent. In other words, the participants of the groups did not square their answers before measurement. Before we move to SPSS to run a quick example of the ANOVA, I will show you what we will interpret in the analysis. Once we generate the results, we will of course describe the sample variables. We will evaluate Levine's to assess homogeneity of variances which we will then use to determine which post hoc tests we're going to report. We will first evaluate the null hypothesis at model level to learn if the ANOVA test was significant. And if it is significant, we will then interpret the effect size that belongs to the model and the post hoc results with great detail. I will be sure to spend time to tell the story of the data, including how to interpret the means for the post hoc results and, of course, social change. And with that, let's move to SPSS. And here is the data set that we've been working with in previous videos. By now, you should be familiar with this. Um, to summarize, it's the CDC data set that measures health factors in our uh, greater population, so to speak. And this sample exists of 2,000 participants. I have an independent variable that is uh, measured at the nominal level, its marital status. It has six groups that matter to us. And so it's definitely more than three levels. And I'm going to use that um, to find differences between different levels of um, marital status for how many days participants physically do not feel well. It's not the same variable I've used before. I focused before on mental health. I'm now focusing on physical health. I'm going to click on the Analyze button, Compare Means, and I'm going to bring up the one-way ANOVA, Quick Reset, 
the marital status is the factor. That's what the independent variable is called in an ANOVA. So I'm going to drag that over and put it in the factor box. My dependent variable is the number of days that participants do not feel well physically. And we didn't have to click too many options in the t-test, but here we definitely will. I'm first going to click on the options button here. I'm not automatically going to get the means and the descriptive of the sample variables with some test setup. So I always want to click descriptive. I know that sometimes in examples in books or on other videos, the descriptive doesn't come into play, but I think describing your variables in the sample data set is stats 101. You always want to familiarize your audience with how these variables are defined and how they act in your sample data set. Now, of course, I will need the homogeneity of variance test. That's my Levine's. And now that I've asked for both, that's all I need. I can click continue and I will have to go to the post hoc test. And let me first explain the two parts here. I can see that the top choices here, where the majority of the post hoc options live, and have a header that's called equal variances assumed. In this box, I'm going to click the Bonferroni. And in this second box, where equal variances are not assumed, I'm going to click the Games Howell. Now I have clicked one of each in case Levine's comes out favorably or not. I want to mention that the different post hoc tests here all have a purpose. We will not dig into that in this video presentation, but if you are planning to use such a test for your dissertation, should you engage with a quantitative research methodology, then I recommend that you dig a little deeper in the, into the purpose of these individual post hoc tests. And with that, I can click continue and I will now click the estimate of the effect sizes. Again, this is not clicked by default in ANOVA. You have to activate that. I'm going to click OK and my output is right here. We have not yet formulated our research question and hypotheses for this scenario. And I'm going to take you back to my PowerPoint real quick where I've written those out for, specifically for this scenario. Let me bring that up and here we are. To what extent are there differences between marital status groups in the United States for physical health? Of course, my alternative hypothesis will state that at least one group comparison has to be significant. And the null hypothesis will state that there are no differences between marital status groups in the United States for physical health. When I return to the output now, the first uh, interpretation that I want to present is the description of the variables in this sample data set. I want to recommend that you spend some time on that and that for every level of uh, marital status, you describe the physical health with the mean, the standard deviation, and your sample size, because you really want to familiarize your audience with how these variables are measured and presented on this data set and how these sample numbers came out for the participants on this data set. The next step, of course, will be our Levine's interpretation. And you want to focus on the mean interpretation here. Only the top row deserves to be interpreted here for us. I have a sig of 0.331, seems rather high to me. Let's compare that to the threshold values that I showed on an earlier uh, video. And here you can see that uh, comparison and what that means for Levine's. Remember, Levine's works like a secret null hypothesis behind the scenes. And it's not something that we necessarily have to state. If you want to state it, make sure that you write it in a, in a correct way and dedicate it solely to Levine's. This is not your null hypothesis. This is merely the statement that we are testing to learn if the variances are somewhat equal in the greater population. And the variances are the variances of those individual groups in that independent variable. Our Levine's at 0.33 came out a bit high, so homogeneity is definitely fulfilled for Levine's. And only for Levine's do we hope for a p-value greater than 0.05 because that will fulfill our assumption. Let's return to our output. 
And at this moment, I know which post hoc test I'm going to report should I find significance in this ANOVA test. This high value of Levine's indicates that only one post hoc test is appropriate. And I'm going to bring up the setup of the test again. SPSS has a memory, and I can still go look how we set that up. Equal variances are assumed. So should I find significance, I'm going to report the Bonferroni and not the game's Howell. And I think at this point, this is what you can tell your reader, that if you find significance for this ANOVA test, you're going to interpret the Bonferroni, Bonferroni test results only. Now, the ANOVA output pertains to the whole model. The between groups are significant, so the comparisons between the groups are significant, 0 0.001. That means that I will now have to engage with the effect size. What is the effect size of that between groups difference? And the effect sizes are presented here in this box. I'm going to use the point estimate, 0 0.026. Please refer to your book on the exact interpretation of this um, eta square. In um, my book, these values come out to the values that I presented on an earlier video. Let me find my effect size slide here, and here we go. Um, of course, we only interpret the effect sizes when the P is smaller than 0.05, as it was in RNOVA. These are guidelines. Follow your book or the guidelines from your instructor. A moderate effect size for our eta squared lies between 0.1 and 0.25. So our effect size in our output from SPSS seems rather small. Let's check that real quick so we can see that in our output. And here we are, 0.026. Indeed, this is a small effect size. The interpretation for the eta squared comes from your book. I want to refer you back to your book because there are different ways to interpret this. I was taught to multiply this with 100, which will give you a percentage, 2.6% of the physical health. That is not good for those groups is contributed to differences between those groups. Now I can uh, move to the post hoc results. The post hoc result is rather intricate, and you'd have to spend some time looking through these tables. I'm going to ignore the games Howell, so I'm only going to bring up the output tables for the Bonferroni. Now, careful here, because it repeats. This is a one group to another group comparison in great detail. As you can see here, I'm comparing marital status to marital status. So married is compared to divorce. Married is compared to widowed. Married is compared to separated. Married is compared to never married. And married is compared to member of unmarried group. There is a repeat here. When I compare married to divorce, I get the same values as divorced to married, same sync, but my mean difference changes sign because I am subtracting them in reversed order. SPSS gives you a present here. It places an asterisk behind every mean difference that is significant. So that's a really good start. I can see that I have two asterisks in this first group of comparisons, right? A 0.007 and a 0.03. Careful, they repeat. I get that 0.07 again and I get that 0.03 again. So you want to flush out the doubles. For those group comparisons that are significant and only for the significant group comparisons, I will then deepen my understanding by going back to the means the group comparison married and divorced are significantly different from each other, 0.007. And I'm now going back to the mean output. 
here on the top of my um, output screen and I can see that married people have a lower number of days that they physically don't feel well compared to divorced. Now, mind you, you might see some differences here, but keep in mind that these are sample numbers. I am interpreting that for the population against the 95% confidence level. So we only articulate the group differences with means that are significantly different. I recognize um, three, pardon me, I recognize only two, 0.007 and 0.03. All the other group comparisons are not significant. Usually, I will interpret this in the direction of the minority. And what I mean by that is most of these group comparisons are not significant, except married compared to divorced, P equals 0 0.007, and married compared to separated people, P equals 0.03. These two group comparisons are then further interpreted by evaluating the means to let the reader know which one of these groups has a, a higher or lower number of physical days that they don't feel well. So married has a lower mean than divorced and a lower mean than separated. So for your physical health, it's better to be married than divorced, and it's better to be married than to be separated. And now we will have to interpret that social change aspect. Ask yourself who the stakeholders are. Who wants to know how married people feel when it comes to their physical health, and who benefits from knowing? Maybe the medical profession wants to know. Maybe the psychoanalysis profession wants to know, psychologists, therapists, counselors. So think about this in a creative way. If you want to drive social change and you want to increase physical health, improve physical health for people who are uh, of different marital status, you would focus on divorced people and separated people before you would focus on any of the other groups. And this concludes our interpretation of the results, but I still want to take you back to my PowerPoint to show you these tables once more, but now with the same approach that I showed on the last video when we interpreted the t-test. And I want to show you the tables and flush out those numbers that you really need to write this up. The descriptive statistics box is important for you because you want to share the description of your variables with your reader. How do these variables act on this data set? And in the least, I think that you should mention the mean, but I think the sample size and standard deviation also comes into play. The Levine's test is evaluated with the p-value there. We only interpret the top row based on the mean. The ANOVA output is evaluated first for the SIG, the p-value, to see if we have significance. When you write this up, you'll need to bring more numbers than we discussed. The degrees of freedom and the f-value also come into play. And I kindly refer you to your statistics book or your APA 7th edition book, or even the resources here at the Academic Skills Center. The static resources offer examples on how to write this up. In these video presentations, I do not bring write-up examples, as I see that more as a scholarly writing skill. Of course, when we have interpreted the ANOVA, it is paired with the effect size, the eta squared. For an interpretation, I'm sure that they live um, as examples in your statistics book. And once you have acknowledge that the ANOVA is significant, you have to dig a little deeper with the post hoc test, and you want to find those asterisks, those p-values that are significant. It's really nice that SPSS gives us those asterisks. Careful, though, that you do not report doubles because we can turn these groups around. Married compared to divorced is the same as divorced compared to married, remember? 
only report the singular group comparisons that are significant and then illustrate them, tell the full story of the data by bringing the means into the interpretation. And with this last part of our presentation to show the measures and values that are important for your APA write-up, our video presentation about the ANOVA test has now come to an end. Thank you for watching this video presentation. If you have course level statistics questions, reach out to our stats tutors at statsupport at mail.waldenu.edu or view our statistics support resources at academicskills.waldenu.edu.